Hello and welcome to episode 147 of the How to Survive podcast. Mm-hmm. My name's Joe and you are Chris, aren't you? I am. How long have you been so? Uh, a little while now. A little while. 147 episodes so yeah, far. Yeah, <laughs> if, uh, if you see any other Chrises running around, yeah. do not trust them. I won't. I will keep that in mind. This week's movie, right, mm. is... A bit like last week's movie, but with Mm -hmm. more sides. Yeah. Yeah. There is no wrong. There is no right. The circle only has one side, sang Travis. Yeah. (laughs) Not so this week's movie, (laughs) which has three sides. Yeah. The movie is Triangle from 2009. Yeah. Directed by Christopher Smith. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's available on Netflix in the UK and I think elsewhere as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, So go and watch it if you haven't seen it already, because the nature of our discussion is such that we will ruin it. Mm. And it's a sort of film where it can be ruined because it hinges on a very flimsy twist. (laughs) And interestingly, Chris, Mm. uh, this movie references Sisyphus, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, And Sisyphus, uh, the story of Sisyphus, has a classical influence on modern culture. And tasks that are laborious and futile are therefore described as Sisyphean. Mm. And on that note, let's talk about Triangle, shall we? (laughs) (laughs) After this. You know what I do when I have a bad dream? I close my eyes and I think of something nice. So let's go sailing. Wind's dropped out on us. Get below deck now. Get the life jacket. Thank God. Hello? Where is everybody? You enter a place you have never been. I recognize this corridor. Everything you see, you have seen before. So, triangle. Mm-hmm. In Euclidean geometry, any three points with non collinear <laughs> when non collinear determine a unique triangle and simultaneously a unique plane. What do you think of that? Good summary? Yeah, um, I enjoyed the film. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there, I liked the Wikipedia summary better than my own. Okay. The Wikipedia summary is... Yacht passengers encounter mysterious weather conditions that force them to jump onto another ship, only to have the odd havoc increase. The odd havoc. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Now, buckle up, because this is going to be a bumpy ride. Jess is a single mother with an autistic child, Tommy. Mm. The movie opens on Jess comforting Tommy after he's had a bad dream. Mm. Jess then mops up some paint spilled by Tommy before responding to the doorbell, but there's nobody there. She asks her neighbour if he saw anybody, but he claims he did not. Mm. Aboard a yacht, we meet Greg, the captain, his friends Sally and Downey, a married couple, and their friend Heather, and we're soon introduced to Victor, who arrives with Jess. Now, Jess boards the yacht and goes to take a nap to recover because she feels unwell. Mm -hmm. She has a strange dream where she sleeps on a sandy beach, seemingly having washed up there. When she wakes from the dream, she seems to have recovered emotionally and forgotten what the dream was about. Weird. The group enjoys an afternoon of gentle fun before being completely becalmed on a windless sea. Suddenly, a storm hits the boat. Greg attempts to radio the Coast Guard, but receives a transmission from a distressed woman. With that, the Coast Guard and the distressed woman become unreachable. What's going on here? The boat is battered by the storm and capsizes. Heather is lost in the chaos. Now once again becalmed and floating on the wreckage of their yacht, the group notices a huge cruise liner moving out of the fog towards them. They notice someone aboard, but in classic horror movie fashion, the person is a shadow who darts out of view. Mm. They begin exploring the ship, immediately splitting up. Downey and Sally search for Heather, who they think is aboard. Jess and Greg look for the bridge and Victor chases after the shadowy shipmates alone. Sally and Downey claim that they need to go to the theatre, 
as though it was an agreed plan, despite us not seeing that plan hatched. Mm. Jess and Greg find a cabin with Go to the Theatre written in blood, and on their way to the theatre, they become separated. Jess enters the ballroom to find a blood-soaked Victor. Victor lunges at Jess and tries to choke her to death, but she sticks a finger in a gaping hole in the back of his head, and he dies instantly. Yeah. Before she could, pro- before she could process the incident... She hears a gunshot from the theatre and runs in. Greg is lying dead with Downey and Sally leaning over him. They claim that with his dying breath, he says, Jess shot him. Jess begins to explain herself, but is cut short by Downey and Sally both being executed by a masked gunman on the balcony above. Jess escapes and chases the masked assailant. Then follows a melee on the main deck, which ends with Jess clubbing the masked assailant into the sea as the assailant says... You have to kill them. It's the only way to save your son. In a strangely familiar voice. Who do you think it could be, Chris? Who could that be? Uh, Downey. (laughs) The assailant falls into the sea, and with that, the ship happens upon a stricken vessel. And would you believe it? It's the same stricken vessel containing Jess, Greg, Victor, Downey, and Sally, Mm. who all board the ship. Yeah. Jess observes their activities playing out exactly as they did before. Mm. But she gets too close. And Victor notices her before giving chase. He chases her to the deck and is surprised to find her there. How did you get here so fast, he says, not realising that she is a copy. Or that, the cop- that he is a copy of... You know, yeah. th- there are two Jesses. Yeah. Uh, she frantically tries to explain what's going on, but to no avail. Victor grabs Jess to restrain her and she pushes him away, accidentally impaling the back of his head on a spike. Mm. Happens all the time. Yeah. Jess runs away, hiding in a cabin where she finds a series of notes which say, if they board, kill them, Mm. in her handwriting. And Mm -hmm. she tests that by writing out another one and adding to the pile of notes that say, if they board, kill them all, in her Mm -hmm. handwriting. Jess opts not to play that game and instead tries to find people to convince them what's going on. At that point, uh, Sally and Downey, Mm. best name ever, Downey. Yeah. Very American name, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. they get split up from Jess and come across another Jess. Yeah, who is like, who's sort of Jess further down the line, yeah, right? She's, she's, like she's a, gone a bit mad. Yeah. And she says, follow me, and takes them into like a cabin mm-hmm. and then like slits Downey's throat and like mortally wounds Sally. Yeah. Um, and then she's like so busy just like stab- repeatedly stabbing Downey in like the chest and stuff that uh, Sally's able to escape. Yeah. Uh, but very badly wounded. Uh, and th- throughout the movie, we've seen like blood stains everywhere, which we now realise it are uh, Sally's blood stains. Yeah, we we keep seeing yeah. yeah like blood, and then later see what leads to it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the mad version of Jess mm-hmm. then writes, goes to the theatre in blood on the on the wall. Yeah, the which mirror. then it, which explains why, why it's there. there in the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then our our good Jess, our Jess, mm. meets up with the wounded Sally. And like chases her to try and help her, like, oh, stop, I'll help you. Yeah. But obviously she doesn't trust her because she's just gone another version of her. It's very confusing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she follows her up to the top deck or the main deck. Yeah. Where there's a huge pile of rotting Sally corpses. Yes. Which our Sally crawls into and dies. Shortly thereafter dies, yeah. Pretty miserable stuff. It's that is I would say, by some distance, the high point of the film. Uh, the, the creepiest part. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, but we'll talk about that. Um, Not the only pile of dead birds in the film, eh? Yeah, the saints. <laughs> <laughs> Jess looks like she sort of gives her her cardigan to make sure she doesn't die uncomfortably. <laughs> yeah. But then as she stands up, she looks over and sees the other Jess... Uh, killing the masked assailant and throwing her over, throwing the assailant overboard. Right. Yeah. So then she's all spooked and being like, "What the fuck's going on?" Yeah. Uh, and she runs downstairs to another cabin. Uh, and she falls over and gets her locket caught on a floor grate. Yeah. And realize there's a huge pile of her locket. Yeah. So basically, various things happen where she's like, "This has happened thousands of times before." Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just like, it's, it's clear that. This is not the first time this has happened and everything she's doing is predetermined to... Like, you know, it's the classic time travel thing of everything they're doing to try and prevent X happening is actually the events that lead up to X. Yes. Um, Yeah. 
standard fare, really. Yes. Jess decides enough is enough, and driven mad by all the death, decides she wants to break the cycle. Mm. So she'll take her own advice and kill them all if they board. Mm -hmm. She goes downstairs and puts on a mask and loads a shotgun. She finds Greg and shoots him, but he realises who she is and tells Downey and Sally with his dying breath, Jess shot me. Mm. Jess then shoots at Downey and Sally, but other Jess escapes. Yeah, so Jess, this, is, this is a repeat of the yeah, scene that we saw earlier. The movie coming back on itself. Yeah. Not for the first time mm. and not for the last. Jess chases her and they fight with other Jess knocking our Jess, who is the master assailant, yeah. into the sea. Yeah. Our Jess wakes up on a beach and begins to walk inland. And it's the, the beach from the, the dream. Yeah. Soon she's running down her street where she finds herself putting washing out, just like in the opening scene. Mm. Through the window, she sees past version Jess mm -hmm. uh, shouting abuse at her autistic son, Tommy, admonishing for his behavior, calling him an asshole mm. and hitting him. Germany being a dick. Yeah. Uh, so she's, she, she's revealed to be an abusive parent. Yes. Our Jess grabs a hammer from the shed mm -hmm. and kills that version of Jess, all of which is seen by Tommy. So she then tells Tommy, it's all a bad dream. And the movie goes full circle. Yeah. This is the opening scene of the film. Full triangle. Aye. Jess stashes the murdered version of herself in the trunk of the car. Yeah. And takes Tommy to his daycare, I guess. But yeah. while driving, Jess hits a pigeon with the, the car. Yeah. And gets out to throw the pigeon over the sea wall, but notices a huge pile of pigeons already there. Yeah. So she's still in the loop. Yep. She gets back in the car. Tommy is distressed by the blood on the windscreen. And Jess becomes agitated, losing control of the car and crashing into a lorry. Mm. Tommy is killed, and the murdered Jess is spilled out of the trunk onto the floor. Mm -hmm. Our Jess looks on, confused and terrified, before making her way to the harbour in a taxi. Leaving the taxi, she promises the taxi driver that she'll be back to pay the fare. Uh, and then she meets Victor on the pier, and walks down the dock where she meets Greg. Greg asks if she's okay, and she says yes, then goes on the boat for a nap. When she wakes up from the nap, she is fine and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Classic bit of triangular storytelling, isn't it, Joe? Yes. It's... I mean, that was an, a labour to read. Yeah. Hopefully it trust, made sense. Trust me, listener, it's no more clear when you're watching the film. <laughs> Basically, let's summarise it very briefly in a couple of sentences. Jess gets on the yacht. The yep. yacht capsizes. Yep. All the group get on a cruise ship. Yeah. On the cruise ship, there's a slasher going around killing people. Yes. Jess overpowers the slasher and throws them off the boat. Yeah. But before the, she manages that, the slasher says, "If they'll come back, kill them all. Yeah. Soon after, the capsized boat arrives again, including Jess and yeah. all of the rest of the people who were already dead. And she realises that she's caught in an endless time loop and every time all the people die, another batch of the yacht people arrive. Yeah. Um, aside from Jess, who is somehow immune to that. And therefore, there are multiple versions of Jess at various stages of this like psychological breakdown where she gradually accepts that, firstly, nothing she can do can change the outcome of what's going to happen. Mm. And also... The, the only way to get back to her son is to kill all of them. Yep. Eventually, she doesn't quite manage to do that and becomes the Jess slasher that is forced off the boat. But when she's forced off the boat, she washes up on the beach back home, mm. runs home, but it's back to the morning. Yeah. So she kills her version of herself that we see being abusive. Yes which it's implied is what she is to her child. It's not like she has fallen into a coherence, no. you know, version of... Um, no, she's seeing what happened that morning, which we did, hadn't previously seen. Yeah, yeah. She then drives somewhere, hits a truck, the body of her Murdered doppelbanger, yeah, yeah, and the body of her son spill out of the car. She's killed her son and then goes onto the dock and the film loops right yeah so it's basically i guess the implication is that she dies in the car crash originally one interpretation that i've read is basically that um when we see her loading the car and cleaning up mm. at the start of the film mm. what's actually happened is that she's killed her son in a fit of rage right packed his body into the car 
and driven off, then had the car crash, etc. Right? That's pretty weak. Yeah. At that point, though, I don't she dies in the car crash, yeah. and that's where the loop starts. Right? I don't. I don't believe that because there's nothing in it to say she killed him. Well, other than the fact that we, uh, I don't believe we see the sun between the bit where she gets really angry at him. Like she gets really angry at him, mm. then she's cleaning stuff up, then she's putting a bag in the boot, and then later we see that there's a car accident and stuff. But mm. it's it's not. He's, in, he's in the car though, isn't he? Yeah, I. It's, just, yeah. But then, like you know, the other interpretation is that she's just putting a bag in the car, or that the loop is always her. Yeah. But then the film implies that it's basically a purgatorial. Yeah. Setup, and it's, it's not real. It's cumulative, though, isn't it? Yeah. This there's, is the there's, there's stuff accumulating, so yeah. it's like, well, you could count how many times this has happened in theory. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like it doesn't make sense no it doesn't make sense and that yeah. is essentially the problem with the film i would say yeah that's that's a big problem for the film uh, thank you for listening to the hands podcast yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's exhausting trying to explain it it really is i mean we did coherence which is a similar film in as much as it it's meant to be mind bender mm. it's significantly better because it's so clear like you know it's i won't ruin it but similar things happen where yeah. it's like person a Things change for person A, but you're able to track them quite neatly through the story. Yeah. Whereas you can't do that as easily in this. No. And um, while I don't doubt that you could plot out all of the loops and what happens in each of them yeah. and figure that out, I don't believe that it has the same consistency and logic applied mm. to it that something like Primer has. Right. The prim Primer is like the, the prototypical, like, it's Ultimate, the gold, it's the gold like, standard, isn't it? Yeah, basically, it, it requires you. It, nothing's explained. It requires you to watch it like fifteen times to fun, fully understand it, yeah. and then watch three hours of YouTube explanations. Yeah, and like with a diagram printed yeah. out in front of you. Yeah, yeah, right. Which is it's an extremely complicated film. Yeah, but at least when you watch Primer or when you understand Primer, the logic is so consistent and clear. Yeah. The characters' motivations all make sense, and it is as if like this is what would happen in this situation, right? Yeah. Whereas with, with Triangle, it, it does go into a level of fantasy as well as sci-fi. Yeah. Which I don't mind. Which is, which is why I say it's like a sort of purgatorial yeah. thing that she's slipped into. But then, because it doesn't... Because it, it, firstly, it feels personal yeah. because she is the only one yeah, who exactly, yeah. appears to be able to like be conscious of what's going on. Yes. And she's the only one who doesn't appear completely tied to the loop yeah. because she, even though a version of her always gets on the boat, she is able to sort of last through multiple get, loops. Get off the boat. Yeah. Right. And then obviously the ending with the taxi driver, that's all quite surreal and yeah. has the feel of like an afterlife type set, yes. set up. Yeah, under especially the driver, as she's yeah. standing over her own body. Yeah. Right. Whether that's a doppelganger or whatever, but like, Things don't tally up, right? So, no. so this is the point, right? Because the reason Primer and, and Coherence are good is because they have a good verisimilitude, right? Mm. The rules of the game are very clear. Yeah. Whereas there are a lot of unanswered questions about the rules of Triangle. I think you're, yeah. you're about to make that point, right? Well, I, I think that basically it's like they, they have written a lot of um, parts into the film without necessarily thinking about how what the wider implications of them are right. so for example mm. as i mentioned in the um recap the moment where uh jess is following sally yeah who is mortally wounded and she rounds a corner mm. to find sally crawling to crawling towards a corner of the ship where there mm. are dozens and dozens of her own body yeah yeah that is like an intensely distressing yeah. image, right? And it is very yeah. effective. Because, you know, like, she is very confused by it and, like, yeah. it's and genuine it, horror. And imagine being in that situation, yeah. not only that you've been stabbed and you're dying, but your last desperate effort to survive, you realise, has led you to the place, of, like, evidently has led you to the place of your death. Yeah. Right? But it doesn't make sense why... There aren't dozens of 
Victor's bodies piled up everywhere. Yes, and correct, it doesn't yeah. make sense why there's not dozens of Greg's piled up in the theatre. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Victor goes over the boat, doesn't he? Though? Yeah. So maybe if, he was, in one in one, in one scenario, situation. Yeah. In other scenarios, he's dead in the ballroom. Yeah. And you could say that the A version of Jess drags the body off or whatever, but we don't see that. No, that's the and problem. Yeah. Th- the way the film suggests it is that the loops are so consistent and quick mm. that there's not g- time to clean up the the dirt no because it's when jess first forces the slasher off the side of the boat yeah the new yacht turns up you Instantly, know 30 yeah. seconds later yeah, yeah. right which again right so like in primer which is you know without going into too much detail about people who managed to create a time machine mm. right there you know they are going back X number of hours, yeah, right? Yeah. And so when there's a loop, you know, you know, a, you have an approximation of how long this loop is, what amount of time they're going back, yeah. how, you know, and all of the, what that means. With this, it's like just basically random. And they've, they've stumbled upon a number of, you know, arresting images that, like the piled up bodies. Yeah. Which and you know a, a number of interesting ideas like you you know he said you shot him yeah, yeah. and the slasher is the survivor character yeah, yeah. and like you see her become that yeah right those are all interesting ideas interesting concepts but it's not grounded in a coherent enough no. structure which is where the movie falls down absolutely I agree with that I think you know it has legs it has sea legs but it loses them somewhere. And then recovers them, and then then loses them towards the end, irretrievably. I think. Yeah. I like the opening creepiness and the sense of like a dreamlike dread that you get, mm. which happens occasionally throughout it. Like it is, it's surreal and dreamlike to have the bodies piled up, yeah, and the piles of birds, yeah, and, and the, the lockets and everything, yeah, like, yeah. and the notes and stuff. All yeah. that stuff's really good, but yeah, it, yeah. It, the film doesn't back it up. I think as soon as the the wider characters show up, it becomes incredibly staid and teenagery for quite a while. Okay. Like you're basically spoon fed the characters and like the types, um, like they they would all make the perfect body doubles for like the Scooby Doo gang. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. You know exactly who you're dealing with. Nothing surprises you about any of them. Mm. Then it recovers in the middle when the pieces start moving into place. I think the part for me where it was like this is getting good now mm. was when the mask the assailant just starts like picking people off from the balcony and mm. like it's not just like taking shots. The limbs blown off. Yeah, like that's good. Yeah. It's exciting and unexpected. But I wouldn't say you begin to work out what's happening because I think if you've ever seen a film before, you know early on that they're in a time loop. Like as soon as you hear the woman on the radio, you know there's someone from their group. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. And it's just a matter of time of like, where, where is it going to loop to? That's what yeah. you need to know. But that that's the thing is that there's no yeah. point. Like there's no moment that you, it's constantly ticking towards. Yeah, like if you had a character leave the room and then come back, like only on a rewatch or only in a YouTube video, you work out that's when the change happened. Yeah. That would be good. Mm. But it doesn't really work that way. No. I think the idea is, like, the premise is brilliant. It's a modern retelling of the Sisyphean legend mm. in a haunted house, essentially. But I think the execution is not so great. The characters, as, as I said, are pretty mundane. The dialogue is garbage. Mm. And the two leading characters, who I'd say are Jess and Greg, right? Mm. It's, they have no chemistry because this is their first date, right? That's such yeah. a weird way to have it. Yeah, it is a bit like, odd. He, he went into her diner where she works and asked her to come sailing with him. And she was like, yeah, great idea. Yeah. So strange. The, the thing with the whole Sisyphean task element of it yeah. is that it doesn't make sense to me why the film is then so punishing on all of the other friends. Right, yeah. Because, for example, Sally seeing dozens of her own bodies, that's, like, torturous and cruel yeah. in a way that it doesn't make sense for... Her, for... Like, Sally hasn't done anything. Sally yeah. hasn't let, hasn't killed This all. isn't her punishment, so why is she being punished? Right. Yeah. And in many ways, Jess is the one who suffers the least, really. Yeah. Aside from the fact that she has to kill other people which to be honest but then it becomes a bit weightless yeah Yeah, it becomes a bit weightless because they're they're essentially avatars yeah and she doesn't even like she doesn't kill a version of herself or you know they're also strangers to her yeah yeah exactly if if she was forced to kill family members or lovers yeah that would be different it's but it's there's you know 
go on this boat and kill people, all of whom, even the one you're there on a date with, who you've only met like twice. It's so strange. Yeah, it's it's a classic idea, I think, the core of it, that the idea is much better than the way it's executed. Yeah. The the ship is called the Aeolus. Mm-hmm. Aeolus. Aeolus, Aeolus, yeah. uh, who is the father of Sisyphus. Right. Sisyphus um, screwed over death, cheated death in some way and was punished by having to push a rock up the hill for eternity, only to have it roll back down so he'd have to do it again, right? Mm-hmm. That is his punishment for cheating death. It doesn't seem like Jess has cheated death. So that's It seems like she is dead. Yeah. Like she, that's what it... It doesn't make sense. The, the, what it feels like is that she is in her own hell. Yeah. But then that, but why, then, why but, invoke Sisyphus? Because that doesn't... And, and also she's in her own hell, but... It's like an, an extremely impersonal hell, as you say, mm. because she's just trapped to the people, a bunch of people that she doesn't know. Yeah. And every so often gets to go back to her kid. And like, would that, that would be fine if she wasn't a horrible pet. Like she would get away with it if she wasn't an abusive parent. Yeah. It's like weird. screaming at her. What's, what's the message? What's the moral? Yeah, I mean, the the moral is don't be an abusive parent. Yeah, but, but then that's, that's, that's like that's, a, it's yeah. a crummy moral to base your protagonist around. Yeah, like, and she doesn't learn the lesson. No, well, I think she does, but then the game's up. She can't. She can't, she can't learn. She can't improve in it because it's just stuck in a loop. Yeah, exactly. So, so the, at the end of the film, like, well, I I suppose that the is the ending of the film suggesting that she's come to some sort of realization that all these events lead up to her kid mm. dying. Yeah. And so she's going to try again to do it better, but she gets on the boat, has a nap, and then forgets. forgets. Is that the idea? Yeah, I think that's probably and then, it. And then basically she makes all the same mistakes over again. So it's like she's... So in that respect, she is... You know, when she falls asleep, that's the point at which the rock rolls back down the hill. Yeah. Because then she has to start all over again. Yeah, I get it, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It. But then th- that's that's fine, but then the cumulative part is what bothers me, I think, from a logistic perspective. Because yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, you've got, like you said, you've got 40-odd dead Sallys. Mm. Where's all the dead Gregs? Yeah. You've got, you know, 100 dead pigeons. Mm. Eventually, the beach is going to be full of dead pigeons, so you, you'd see them a mile off. Yeah. And like, they, rot, they rot at different rates as well. Yeah. It's the, like, but the body, well, as they would, but then, yeah, I mean, it just, I, I don't understand why some people are there, some people aren't. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Not, it's not tightly written. It's, no, it's, it's frustrating, I think. Because it's, as you said, the idea is there, but it's, it's, it's just it, not. It reminded me of what, what we often call a my first horror movie, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have something like Insidious, there is a very ropey premise. Yeah. Or it's, it's a fairly good premise, right? A kid has gone to the other side, like, Para, uh, poltergeist yeah you know, that's a good idea a, a kid has passed over to another dimension you have to get them back mm-hmm. and insidious is good because there are arresting scenes like the creepy kid dancing like uh various imagery mm-hmm. but they are all there which you know the rest of the film isn't strong enough to back those up no right it's it's a series of good scenes which plays like a greatest hits of mo- horror movies and a lot of a lot of horror movies do that now, right? Yeah, they will rely on imagery. They'll rely on particular tropes, which makes them a my first horror movie because they're only good the first time you see them. Sure, and they're very good for a teenage audience who don't really have to pay attention. Yeah, but I think this is more like a my first mind fuck movie, isn't it? Yeah, uh, like a my first mind bender movie for the mm. kids. Um, <laughs> you got the blood on the mirror. You got the shadow at the door. Yeah, the there's the lots of shining the references as well. Yeah, the running around the mirror. The, the two yeah. three nine uh, is the room of right. the hotel uh, of the cruise ship. Yeah, that they running around the corridors and yeah. getting disoriented. It's a dangerous game, Using as we always say, invoking something like which the is shining. Better. Yeah, yeah. And it was always the shining they invoke, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think that you know it, it it starts out as a horror movie and turns into a, something else when the mm. the characters start getting picked off by a sniper. Yes. Which is good. Yeah. That part's exciting. I mean, yeah. Well, what what more is there to say about it, really? Yeah, not much. I've got a couple of questions I think we've asked. I wrote these down. Mm. You know, I think we've answered them here. Why is it happening? Why is all this happening? 
either as punishment for being an abusive parent or potentially killing the child, which I mm. didn't see myself. But then it doesn't, it doesn't seem like a lesson you can learn from. No. And like, it's not spelled out clearly enough, clearly, because we're aren't yeah. asking what... Like, Sisyphus is, is good. This, the fable of Sisyphus, the story of Sisyphus is good because it's like you can understand why that is a good punishment for somebody. Mm-hmm. For eternity to have to... Pick, you know, the futility of the activity is the punishment, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas this is like, this isn't futile because you've continually got hope that it will change and mm. it doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. It's, a, it's an odd one. Yeah. Um, This is a film with a time loop in it. Yeah, it is, isn't it? But how much do you really know about films <laughs> with time loops? <laughs> oh, oh, how did I know it would be so good as yeah. this? So last week we had the Shapes, Shapes in movies, movies quiz. Yeah. Was it time time loops in movies quiz this uh, week? This is um my Well well how much do you know about uh time loops in movies, Joe? Let's find out with my loops films quiz. Great stuff. Loops films quiz. Yeah. This film was loopy. As I said yeah. last week. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fairly straightforward, Joe. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions about um films that have time loops in yeah i think you will have seen all of these okay most of them question one Mm -hmm. in primer yeah having discovered that the box functions as a time machine what do aaron and abe travel back in time to do it's been some years since i've seen primer Mm -hmm. um and it is not one that's got a lot of iconic scenes yeah i think they go back to they punch someone in the face, but I think that's later on, isn't it? Just buy a hot dog or something? Uh, not <laughs> quite. No. It's uh, to make money from stock trading. Okay. Because they know... Not quite buy a hot dog. No, not exactly. <laughs> maybe it was hot dog stock and I didn't, I didn't catch that bit. Maybe. Right. Question two. According to writer-director Harold Ramis, how long is Phil trapped reliving the same day over and over in Groundhog Day. It's a thousand years, isn't it? Nearly. Multiplied by ten? Ten thousand years. Ten thousand years, which according to Harold Ramis, is the time it takes for the soul to evolve to its next level in Buddhist doctrine. Harold Ramis, I think, was a Buddhist. Okay. So. Ten thousand years. Yeah. Ten thousand years. Yep. Can you imagine? Can you imagine. Question three. In Marvel's Doctor Strange... Right. Dr. Stephen Strange traps a godlike being in a time loop to prevent it from destroying Earth. Mm. What is the being's name? Qu- uh, I haven't seen this one, actually. You got that wrong. Okay. Um, is it A, yeah. Mordamu? Right. Is it B, Dormamu? <laughs> or is it C, Rormadu? Give me them again. A, Mordamu. B, Dormammu, C, Rormadu. <laughs> it's like Vic Reeves. Um, I it's it's a guess. B. Correct. Yes. yes. Dormammu. I knew it was D- Dormammu. Yeah. What does Dormammu do? <laughs> what doesn't Dormammu do? Question four. In about time, mm. how does Tim activate his time traveling powers? We're going in the cupboard. Yeah, I'll give you that. By standing in a closet and clenching his fists really hard. Mm -hmm. Question five. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Hermione is gifted a time turner Mm. by Dumbledore. Why? Uh, So she can study and learn loads to save Harry from some predicament. I'll give you it. It's uh, to enable her to take as many classes as she can. Yeah. Um... Which and later on, she's she's uh, able to save Harry yeah. from a predicament. Yeah, it's good actually. It's, it's cleverly written because she keeps. Th- there's lots of references to her just randomly turning up, right? And they're like, "Where did where did you come from?" And at the end of the film, you realise that she's been using a time machine the whole time. That's good. Yeah. Question six: How many on-screen deaths does Tom Cruise suffer in Edge of Tomorrow? 
It's not as many as you might think. No, I, I, you know, it is implied that it could have been a 10,000-year Yeah, there's project. a lot of off-screen yeah. deaths, definitely. Uh, I think probably 24. Oh, it's 26. Oh. That was very close. Very close. Indeed. That's a hell of a film, isn't it's it? It's a great film. Live, die, repeat. Yeah. When are we going to do that? Another I mean, podcast. Yeah. Do you know what the sequel is called? Um, Edge of Yesterday. No, it's going to be called Live, Die, Repeat, Repeat. Really? Yeah. Really? It's not called Live, Die, Repeat, though. Uh, well, it was released as Edge of Tomorrow, and then they changed the uh, the title to Live, Die, Repeat, which was the tagline. Mm. Um, for its DVD release because they thought no one went to see it because of uh, it being called Edge of Tomorrow. So let's see how Live, Die, Repeat, Repeat does. That's that's bonkers. I didn't know they changed the title. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you go out and buy the DVD, it will be called Live die, repeat. Live, die, Repeat, Colon, Edge of Tomorrow. Why? It's mad. It's mad. We live by repeat. Is a terrible. Like, yeah, it's a rubbish name. Edge of Tomorrow is a much better name. It doesn't really make much sense. It wasn't even sense. called that to begin with. It was called like Half oh, Past uh, Kill. Or no, no, it's, uh, the, it's based on a manga yeah. I think, which is called All You Need Is Kill. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a succession of bad titles. <laughs> All you need is kill. Edge of Tomorrow, tomorrow. Live Die Edge of Tomorrow isn't that bad. It's not that bad, but it's like a fluff title, isn't it? Yeah. It means nothing in the context of the film, really. really. Not like Triangle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Final question, question seven. In Mickey Mouse's Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas, Huey, Dewey, and Louie have to repeat Christmas Day over and over. Why? Because they're ungrateful, I imagine. They didn't they didn't wanna they wanted presents and not family love. I I'll give you that. It's to learn the true meaning of Christmas. Yep. So I think Which you of got, course think, is the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, oh, you got four or five. That's not bad. Thanks, man. And uh, maybe if you get a time machine, you can go back yeah. and get them all right. So, Chris, mm -hmm. with all that said, after that thrilling quiz, thanks again. <laughs> um, sure. How would you survive if you found yourself aboard... The triangle, uh, and then aboard, aboard the Aeolus. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's been a while since we had any uh, absolute textbook horror movie survival sort of tropey ideas. I think. Well, like, don't go in there. Um, yeah. Don't split up. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Don't split up. As right. soon as they get on the cruise ship, the first thing they do is split up, go yeah. their separate ways. Victor is the up. first one to go, isn't he? Because he's a hothead. Yeah. Well, he no, I think um, Greg is the first one possibly to go because Greg and Jess go to look for the bridge. Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but they basically they split up. There's no reason whatsoever to split up, right? Is there? Um, None of them are injured. Couple, couple more ground. <laughs> but like there's no... Why? There's no yeah. reason to do that, Right. And it's madness. And they're on an abandoned ship, Yeah, as far as they know. None of them are familiar with it. It's not good enough to just say, oh, like, we'll meet in the dining room, right? Yeah. Because people could walk down a corridor and just, like, get lost completely. Yeah, exactly. Well, meet, meet me in the theatre. Where yeah. is the theatre? As right. if that's... A, yeah. St and, and so that's mad, right? And yeah. then if they had stuck together, then no one would have been, like, out of the loop when it when the nature of the situation was revealed. Quite right. What's what's the one message Jack Shepard has in Lost? Live together, die alone. Yeah, which is... Uh, it's on the same level as live by repeat. We have to go back! We have to go back! It's Yeah, it's not... It's not. Um, I mean, his point is, if you stay together, you'll survive. Yeah. Do you agree yeah. with that? I, I Evidently, think so. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. It's the same with every horror movie. Work together, stay together, and you'll survive. Hmm. Except Alien. Yeah. Well, but, we did say actually, if they locked themselves in the in, in one the room, room, yeah, yeah. then they, then they'd survive. But yeah, like there'd be none of the misunderstandings that develop. There'd be none of the, you know, crazy stuff that goes down. Yeah. Some people might say that it would make a poorer film. <laughs> 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 but I don't know if I agree. It would be quite quite good if um, like the whole group just walked in on the whole group. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like happens in another film that we've mentioned earlier. 
but we won't mention the name of because it's a spoiler. Yeah. Harry Potter. Correct. So my first point, Chris, mm. is for Jess, who may or may not be dead, but um, doesn't doesn't bear out well for her. No. Um, now, why is she there in the first place? Uh, she's there, well, either on a date yeah, um, and a bit of respite from her uncomfortable domestic situation. Yeah. Or she's there running away from the fact that she's just killed her son in an automobile accident. Right. Let's let's go with what we know. We know. I, I think I think it's pretty nailed on that because um, of the whole. Oh, she didn't even know where her son was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Though she, she, the, she was expected there. Though, would you agree? They yeah. they were expecting her to come, and she did sure, come. yeah. She accepted the offer of a date mm-hmm. with someone who just came into her job and said, do you want to come on a ship I, th- with I me? think they say that he's been in there a few times. Like, it's not just the first time he's walked in there and gone, oh, do you want to come out of the boat? No, he's still there. It's like, like I, he's, they've struck up conversation a number of times. Right, you've worked in a pub. Yeah. Right? If there was a regular mm-hmm. who came in there yeah. and she said to you, or he said to you, after, say, five or six times, mm-hmm. now you're chatty, you talk about football, you talk about whatever's going on. Yeah. Oh, I have a ship. Do you want to come on my yacht with me? Well, the difference here is that um, all of the regulars in the pub that I worked at were mental. So, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Absolutely not. Let's say you worked in a... Well, she works in a... She's a <laughs> right. waitress yeah, yeah, yeah. in a diner. I, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends how if, much of a rapport I'd struck up. All right. If, if, if someone if an, came if in specifically woman, to it, ask you out. Well, it depends, doesn't it? If an attra- when you were working in that pub that we both worked at, yeah. if an attractive woman that you liked came in five or six times and you were chatting to her each time yeah. about football or whatever, yeah. and then she was like, oh, do you want to come on a date with me? You'd have been fucking right, I will. Like, that's the- you would have jumped at the chance, mate. I wonder whether I would. That is nonsense. Because of course it, it, you would. If she was You'd like- have been like... Okay, I'd say maybe let's go to the cinema first. If she was like, right, I'm going on a sailing event with No, you, the you're quite an strangers. outgoing guy. You'd be oh. like, it's not a sailing event. It, what she, what, what, is she what are saying they doing? Is, what are they doing? No, no, no. A sailing event is like a regatta or something. <laughs> right? That What they're doing is, is she says, she comes in and goes, oh, I've really enjoyed our chats about saints or whatever. Right. Right? Yeah. The football team. The yeah, it's not. not. <laughs> right. Yeah. Why don't you come with me on my yacht? Right, you'd be thinking my life is about to become a rap video. Yeah, like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. A rat video. A rat yeah. video. <laughs> you would be like that. Is that is yeah. brand Shervel? You reckon? Yeah, absolutely. I would. I'm a lot less outgoing than you are. Yeah, and I would be less likely to accept that invitation. I think you'd say. accept it out of like awkwardness. not being able to yeah. say no and because it's all yeah. like. I'd be being sick the whole time from seasickness. <laughs> you'd be like, you'd be the one having a nap. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know, mate. I think I see. I, I understand your point, right? Yeah, but he's not exactly a good-looking guy. He's well, I'd like horses for courses, mate. Isn't it? You're, you're saying, but she's good-looking. She's she she should be a Hollywood actress. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like she she might like you know it's people different strokes for different folks, right? Isn't it? I suppose so. Like, you yeah. can't police... What you're basically saying is... Uh, Only good-looking people can go to good-looking people. Or, like, you're basically saying, don't fancy that guy. Yeah. Well, no, but I, then, like, other people might have boats. What's that got to do with anything? But, but I mean, all, all of this is immaterial <laughs> because the, the real answer to this question is don't beat up your kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Don't beat up your kid. Because you'd end up in a time loop yeah. aboard a yacht. And it's no on less... On a date than... that you should never have gone on yeah. in the first place. <laughs> you've, got, you've got commitments. Imagine, imagine she's like murdering scores of uh, like her friends and yeah. herself. And you're going, well, if you'd never gone on that date. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, mate. Yeah. The thing is, mate, about her. Yeah. Is she's, she's got in a bad luck, isn't she? Yeah. She's got a bit of bad yeah, luck. Yeah. She's got a bad record with fellas. I think 
here's another just off the top of my head. Here's a tip: yeah. if you're going on a boat for the day mm. in the middle of the ocean, mm. and there's a, there is a risk that you might be out longer than planned because you can't because you enter a time loop. <laughs> 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 We've all been there. Do you think it's fair to say that she was out longer than planned? <laughs> she did get home eventually. Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, in fact, she got, to, she got back in record time. She got back two hours before she left. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if I was going on a boat, yeah. which I've never, she's never been on a boat before. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that th- no, it's obvious. She's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you on about? <laughs> How is this a way of us? <laughs> You're digging ever deeper. This <laughs> started off as oh, no. don't be, don't do something more sensible for the first day, <laughs> yeah. and then that quickly became go out with more attractive people, and now it's become like practice going out on boats. <laughs> I'm saying if you've never been on a boat before. Right, if I had a kid, right? Why, where I have you got this from? I don't have a kid. How do you know she's never been out on a boat before? It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it does matter. Uh, because it's the whole basis of your argument. Because she doesn't look like she's been on a boat before. <laughs> Why? She's not wearing a sailor's cap. She hasn't got any medals on. <laughs> she's, she's, not wearing, she's not wearing waders and like dragging a net full of fish behind her when she arrives <laughs> look at, Victor is carrying ropes over both shoulders yeah that's true yeah. yeah you look at him and you go that's a man that's been <laughs> out on a boat before he knows how to handle himself yeah. he, he the point is Victor he, Victor have you got the ropes <laughs> yeah I've got the ropes pack them on my shoulders he if he had a kid mm. maybe he does have a kid we don't see he would have made <laughs> arrangements for someone else to pick the kid up in case he's delayed at sea right would you disagree? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with that. Mm. Can you concisely explain how arranging a childminder to pick her son up will would have helped her survive? <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't have been worried. <laughs> She'd have a clear oh, head. You know, you know when you're really anxious and you accidentally worry yourself into a time loop. <laughs> But you know, like when they're, like, she's like, I have to get home to yeah. see my son. Yeah. She'd be like, Well, he's, he's with the child mind. I've got to worry about that. Yeah. I'll, I'll just take my time. Yeah. Yeah. Just enjoy the the <laughs> looping murder of her on a ghost friend. ship. Yeah. Oh. So, we, any any thoughts from you? Yeah. Just shoot the people on the boat as they arrive. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They won't even land on the boat and you could just kill them straight away. It does say if they board, kill them. So they have to be on the boat, maybe. Maybe. Like, at what point, you know, we were talking about the, mm. the you know, things repeating and yeah. remaining. Like, if you shot everyone on the boat, like on the yacht... Would the next yacht like S- bump it. into it? <laughs> yeah. And like it would there'd be like a pile up of successive yeah. like crowds of Yachts. dead yacht people. Yacht people. I guess so. Here's a question. Mm. Why does she have to kill them all? I mean she doesn't. That's that's why? All she needs to do is get off the boat, right? Yeah. It seems that way. Because killing everyone isn't what leads to her escaping. Why how does she arrive at that idea? There must have been a big. Is in because I presume there must be an original loop. Is what yes, what I'm saying. saying. There's yeah. a, there, Jess Prime has gone. You know what I need to do is kill everyone on this boat. But is it is it like a you know self deterministic loop in that there is no beginning or end? It's just well, there must be a beginning because there's a, there's an like, accumulation. I, yeah, but it's it's the it's the grandfather paradox, right? So it's you know. There can't be. That's mm. why it's a. Par- that's why it's paradoxical. Is that because she she was she, there at the start and the end? Yeah, and because it, back if in. the first, like the first loop, Jess Prime, as you put yeah. it, wouldn't have just randomly murdered her friends, so the next lot would never have arrived. Yeah. So when, yeah. So when the, 
Maybe the second lot arrived and they were like, well, there can't be two sets of us. Mm. Let's kill each other. But they, they only arrive when all the people are dead. Mm. So maybe the first lot got on. Died of old age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like passengers. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's the question, isn't it? Why, yeah. do they, why do they have to kill each other? Yeah. They don't. It's not just the question we should all be asking ourselves, Jay. Yeah. Any final thoughts from you? Yeah. If um, if someone's going to kill you with a shotgun, mm. don't grab it the barrel because it'll get hot and burn your hands. Okay. Are you talking about the bit where Jess is being held at gunpoint by herself? Yeah. yeah. Um, I seem to remember that after she grabs the gun, she doesn't get shot in the head. Yeah. So in many ways, what you've done is identified the one event that saves her life. And told her not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, maybe it would have helped. Yeah. I mean, what, sh- what you should be saying is, if you've already lived through the moment where you, the past version of yourself grabs the gun, yeah, just take a step back when you're about to shoot your dead. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're right. That's true. Bit of triangular reasoning there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. That was just, that was it. Mm. Isn't that triangle was good. Yeah, <laughs> you sound you sound like you're still feeling passionate about it. I I didn't. I don't know. It's, it's it didn't hold up to scrutiny, did it? No, that's the problem. I don't think so. It was quite an enjoyable watch. Yeah, didn't hold up to cross examination. No, no. Uh, and the, the tenant is the tenant the tenant of the prosecution's case is mm. why why did she have to kill everyone? Yeah, and the defense has no answer. And is therefore condemned by their own silence. Yep. And has to go aboard a ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So um, that was that. Do mm. you have any thoughts other than that? No. Only that talking about this film has felt like rolling a stone up a hill <laughs> yeah. and back down again. Yeah. If you've got any thoughts on how you'd survive in Triangle or last week's movie Circle mm-hmm. or any movies that we cover on this fine podcast, mm-hmm. you could email us which is how to survive show at gmail.com. You can tweet us at how to survive pod. You can find us on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash how to survive pod. Mm. We have a YouTube channel mm-hmm. where we put some video versions of this podcast. Um, nothing too spectacular, but we do have other original videos, which aren't released on iTunes. Yeah. Which are, which quite, are spectacular. They are spectacular. They're on uh, youtube.com forward slash how to survive pod. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. If you've liked what you've heard, you could leave us a five-star review on iTunes or whatever you do your reviews on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and whatever we... reviewing platform you use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'd appreciate it because, you know, it does warm my heart to see yeah. when people like this. Yeah. And people say it's, it's their favourite thing and stuff. Mm. And they like, oh, I'd love it more than oxygen. Yeah. They say, I wish that I could dilute it into a liquid form so I can inject it directly into my beating heart. And to them I say, get help. See you next week for Hereditary. For Hereditary. Yeah. A movie which is already being called the horror movie of the year. Yeah. The movie, the the exorcist for the new generation. Mm, so we, I've heard. At the time of recording we haven't seen it. No. Um, so I'm quite excited. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I know very little about it. I've seen the trailer and it's pretty scary. Yeah. But then the trailer for Suspiria is pretty scary as well. Mm. That came out recently. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not till the end of the year. Yeah. So horror movie of the year contest is heating up. Yeah. And we're only in June. Yeah. Maybe Triangle will slip in there. <laughs> A film from nine years ago. <laughs> it does look like it's from nine years ago, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Liam Hensworth. Yep. Playing a CGI seagull. Yes. <laughs> anyway, see you next week for Hereditary. Yep. yep. After that is Jurassic World 2. Mm. Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, why? Because it's like Lost World, I suppose. I don't know. I haven't seen it that Sounds a bit yet. like Lost World. Yeah. Doesn't it? Mm. Jeff Goldblum's in it. Yeah. Chris Dr. Pratt's Ian Malcolm. And I'll see you there. <laughs> 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 um <laughs> uh, uh, finds a way. Ah. <laughs> uh.
life uh, <clears throat> uh, f- find a way. Uh, <laughs> it's a simple chaos, um, chaos <laughs> theory. <laughs> it's actually, if you put a dinosaur on an island, <laughs> they gotta cut out. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the dinosaurs uh, they would find a way to breed. Uh, uh, cause life, uh, 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 by the way, <laughs> uh, this, of course, uh, I'm, I'm called a rock star of <laughs> it's <physics>. Woody Allen now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for listening. See you next week. Where's Hermione got? Time Turner. Time Turner. There you go. Mm. What I want. Yep. It's a little, um, it's like a gyroscope, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Magic gyroscope that changes time. Why didn't they all use it? Why didn't they just go back and like, Dumbledore's like, I'm just going to go to like, Privet Drive and just fucking blow up the house with a machine gun. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? What? The Dursley's house? Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Where... Dumbledore with a machine gun. Now, where's it called? Um, Hollows. D- Stark's Hollow. You know what I mean. Where's Harry Potter live? Um, Where's he born? I, I, Godric's Hollow. That's you it, got it, right? right? Yeah. Why well, don't they go around there? And what, he's got, and he's got a time machine and yeah. you just fucking blow the house up. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Harry Potter. Greater good. Do you know what I mean? This, this, yeah. These are the problems with magic, right? Yeah. I always think this shit. Like, when they're like, oh, I've got the killing curse. Mm. So, well, we'll fucking kill everyone. Right? Yeah. It's oh, not, no, but it, you, it costs a bit of your soul, Joe. Well, how about this, right? Mm. Um, there are various ways that they trick Voldemort they kill him in throughout the movies right Right. why don't you do those repeatedly it just doesn't make sense yeah why doesn't you know we said this before he he does, Voldemort gets an agent inside um, inside Hogwarts isn't he I know you, you're talking of um, Grindelwald he, he, he takes the pit, he takes gr- the potion he's got Polyjuice potion and he's pretending to be someone he's not he's like the oh uh He's a di- no, no, no! You're talking about um, in Fantastic Beasts, Gellert Grindelwald is no, like no, 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 is no. like no, you are, you are, because it's Colin Colin Farrell. Yeah, is turns the... out to be Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know. I'm telling you, in in the Goblet of Fire. Oh no, no, no! You're talking about someone else. Mad, yeah, I, yeah. Mad, Eye, Mad Moody Eye Moody isn't is the real yeah. Mad Eye Moody. Yeah. So why doesn't Mad Eye Moody, the fake Mad Eye Moody, just go mm. up to like? Because he's he's trapped in a box. No, the fake Mad Eye Moody. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, Go up to Harry and just punch him in the head till he's dead. Uh, because like a... Voldemort needs Harry, um, Harry's body to uh, resurrect himself. Because he's, he's got Horcrux in his head or some shit. Yeah, some, something like that, mate. Oh, he's just so fucking shit. So that was Triangle. Uh, I hope you enjoyed... <laughs>